Get ready at your leisure, fans. A new year adventure awaits, and this week we are headed up to the Luna Lobos Dog Sledding Ranch to try out a different kind of sled power. Then, we're following the Utah ATV Association up to Rydalsh Pass in Chewilla Valley as they show us a great riding trail that's always open, rain, sleet, or shine. Finally, Marie Stein is back to show us how the native population of bighorn sheep in the Utah desert country is getting a huge boost. It's all running your way right now. At Your Leisure is next. Finally, finally, it's happened. And At Your Leisure, that's completely gone to the dogs. Hi, everybody. Welcome to At Your Leisure today. I'm Chad Booth, and we are at the Luna Lobos Dog Sledding Ranch, which is on Browns Canyon Highway in Peoa, Utah, oh, about 15 miles as the crow flies away from Park City and Deer Valley. Now, we are off today on a dog sledding adventure. It's not just it's not just a dog sled ride. This is an entire educational experience that's perfect for the whole family because you learn so much about sledding and the dogs and these magnificent creatures that are just as friendly as can be. So dog lovers all around are gonna love this show. Let's start with learning a little bit about the dogs. Welcome to the ranch, guys. Again, I'm Dana, my husband Fernando, and this is Dee. Uh, the ranch is about 55 acres. You're gonna go through all of that today and everything you see here we've built together. So this here's our doggy Pueblo area. These are heated and furnished inside. They have hardwood floors, air conditioning in the summer, but most importantly, they have Netflix so they can keep up on their shows and their movies and they have their favorites. <laughs> I'm gonna point a couple of dogs out to you. Little Maya is this tan and cream one that's standing up on the deck. And then Buddy is snoozing in between the poles right there. And Goofy is the big guy standing right next to him. So Maya, Buddy, and Goofy. Maya is an Alaskan Husky, so she's mixed with a Greyhound. Usually it's either Greyhound, German Short Hair Pointer, or another type of working dog. They make a really efficient dog. Their endurance is amazing. They don't eat as much, and they recover really, really fast. Whereas dogs like Buddy, who's sleeping, they are what we call Hollywood sled dogs. He's a purebred Siberian. Mainly see them in the movies. Mushers don't use them too much anymore for the exact opposite reason, that they do eat a lot, they take forever to recover, and their endurance is not awesome. <laughs> well, that's why we use these Greyhound mixes, so they can, uh, they're can they able to run longer distances at a much faster speed, and they can process oxygen a lot more efficiently. We've also noticed a significant difference between our purebreds and our mixed breeds. Our purebreds seem to deteriorate a lot more quickly. So Kroner uh, and uh, Jarlsberg. Jarlsberg is a touring dog, he just has the day off. And uh, Gruba, and Kroner here are part of the race team and they also have a day off, so they're just hanging out and just playing along. Maya is one I like to point out. She's one we like to take to presentations. We put her photo up with a lot of our Hollywood sled dogs and we ask the kids who they think the champion is. And they never pick little Maya. It's always somebody like Buddy or Ketchup over here. And so we like to do that to kind of remind kids and everybody else that we don't look at the outward appearance. Maya doesn't care what she looks like outside. All she knows is that she loves to run and that's what she was born to do. And so she wants to do it to her best abilities. And because of that, she's an amazing champion. So we don't let what we look like on the outside determine who we're gonna be on the inside. And every night at nine o'clock, 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. on the dot, Goofy does a pack check where he howls and he waits for everybody at the kennels and everybody over here to chime in. And if one dog is missing, they'll cry all night long. So when one passes away, they mourn for that dog for a few weeks. So they do really do know their pack. Oh yes, you have a lot to say, don't you? Yes. Well, now you have learned everything about the dogs as told by the humans and the pups. We're gonna make our way up to where the sleds are. We'll be mushing in a few minutes. Right now, it's time for us to break away to our where to story. Most people put their machines away in the winter. I never have. I love riding in the snow and playing in it. And 
It's a little tough when you get stuck, but that's what friends and winches are for. We'll be on part of the California Trail for a few more miles <laughs> down this direction, then we'll head south there. This is pretty awesome, Steve. I mean, the weather is phenomenal. The uh, great day. You can't oh, ask for no, can't ask for better. It's uh -huh. yeah, blue skies, no dust, yeah. and nobody else out here. People were headed for California for the gold rush. You know, up in the San Francisco area and that, this is this was the way they came through and of course the historic Donner Party. And we all know how that turned out. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is it's called Hastings Pass or Hastings Cutoff. And Hastings was a lawyer in Sacramento. He had never actually traveled this route. He had convinced people to take it, saying that it would cut off a couple of weeks of time because he was wanting to get everybody to Sacramento so they could make money off of them real quick. But they had to cut from Fort Bridger through to here, they had to cut the trail, which they lost more time than they would have saved by it. And then they didn't realize there's no water from here to Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> the, the good thing, that was in 46. So in 47, when the Mormons came from Fort Bridger, they took Hastings cut off, but the Donner Party had already cut all of the trail, so they benefited from that. that the Donner Party, as you know, suffered because of all of that. It, it was their disaster, but it did help the Mormon pioneers the next year in 47 when they came through. A lot of people don't understand how much history is in this area. Normally when we're out here, all you see is exactly. dust. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and everybody's covered with it. Right. Well, I came out here and didn't know much about it at all. And so I went back and got on the internet and started researching and went into Grantsville and tried to go to the museums there that uh, talk about the Donner Party and the different things that go on. So learned a little bit about it. So when we come back out, I know about it. Yeah, it made it really nice that it snowed last night. And it makes it nice, you don't get lost because you just follow the, follow the fresh tracks. So, uh, made it really nice and it's pretty, you know, with all of it on the, the sagebrush and the cedars and it's just beautiful. The pass coming through uh, the mountains there was beautiful. Uh, I hadn't been in that part, I've always gone further south and, and cut around looking for horses and that. So, that was the first time through the pass and it was really nice. That ski -Doo feeling presents the ultimate freedom. Introducing the 2020 ski -Doo Deep Snow Sleds. The ski -Doo sales event is on now. Visit your local dealer for details. Hey, you don't have to miss one second of adventure. Follow at your leisure on YouTube to watch full episodes or your favorite stories from the show. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all of At Your Leisure's adventures.
Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Scott Huntsman. This is our What's New segment for this week. I'm back with Project Ruby Red. Today we're going to be installing a set of TerraFlex's Falcon Shocks. The Falcon Shock line is manufactured here at TerraFlex in their facility in West Jordan, Utah. So let's go on inside and let's see what that's all about and where they make these shocks. Okay, we're inside TerraFlex office here. We're in the showroom. This place is a candy store to me. I'm digging it. <laughs> I'm here with Dennis Wood. You've seen him on several YouTube videos for TerraFlex. Dennis, tell us a little bit about the company. We've been doing the Jeep thing forever, and, and the major, you know, the suspension obviously needs to work well. We've worked with some great shock manufacturers, but what we found is we needed a shock that would do some specific things for us to increase the ride and the handling and so forth on our Jeeps. A lot of these companies are so big, it's the old trying to turn a battleship thing. They just weren't able to make those changes. So we said, all right, we're gonna do it ourselves. So you guys are indeed, you researched, you developed, and you came up with your own. We had some really good engineers, some really sharp guys, and they, they put together the, the Falcon Shock with some, it's some, some unique designs. I mean, they're Jeep specific. Wow. They <laughs> manufacture those here in West Jordan, is that yeah, right? Yep, yep, the whole, Walk you through back there. We do the whole thing here. Well, let's go take a look. Let's do it. Great. So, Dennis, this is the most impressive part to me about this. We yeah. start with raw material like this. This is the end product. Really, how long does it take them to produce something like this using these machines? You know, they've got it down to the, it's going to take 3.5 minutes to, to mill that end cap. And then it's going to take us another two minutes to do this shaft. So they have it all lined out so that we know how long it takes to produce all the parts to make a shock. This is really, so really cool. This yeah. is the fascinating part <laughs> about all of this to me. Dennis, this is a fascinating looking machine right here. <laughs> what is this thing doing? It's a shock dyno. So when these, when these shocks come out, they hang them on a rack and they sit there for 24 hours. No shock will be sold before it's time. Once it's been tested and there's no leaks on it, we bring them over and they'll do like 20% of the shocks. And if, if the parameters aren't within what the computer's looking for, they pull them out, tear it apart, find out what's going on, check a few more in that batch to make sure they're not bad. We're looking for quality. We got to get them out there, get it done once, get it done right. So Dennis, here's our final product. We're yes, all the way is. to the very end. The fit, the finish looks good and it's been tested. Where Roger does it go that. from here? Well, we got to get it in a box. I mean, it's all stickered up, looks good. So these guys box them up and then it goes to the end of the building and they ship them out from there. But you know what's cool when they put them in the boxes? The guy that built the shock actually signs the card that says, I built this. It's called pride in your work. Wow, I can't wait yeah. to look forward in the shocks that I have because the thing <laughs> that comes next for me, getting a set of these bad boys on Project Ruby Red. So let's head on over to our shop now and we'll That's get good. them on and try them out. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back at the shop. I've got my Falcon shocks. Three of them already installed. I'm down to the last one. So this is really an in easy installation with these. They've got great hardware that lets you mount them just so. Now, up here, slotted and a single bolt. So getting it in and started and then onto the bottom is really a simple step and I'll show you how. Okay, as you can see, we've got the shock in place. Two bolts on top, the one stud at the bottom. It was really simple to get that in. The skid plate clears. One thing I wanted to mention, I also replaced with TerraFlex new springs from their CT3 suspension. The springs are paired with the shocks for their best performance. Let's get the wheel on, and I wanna get this down and try it out on the road. All right, we've got the Jeep out. We've been driving it. I'm really happy with the performance of these shocks. At least on the road, we're gonna try them off-road. These Falcon shocks look fantastic. They're not only a quality product, but they've got a great aesthetic. They've got great instructions. 
great illustrations to go along with it, so the installation was really very simple, and I'm very happy with the result. I'm Scott Huntsman, more at your leisure in a moment. Fly higher, go further, do more. Pursue your passion with Polaris, the world leader in off-road. Live wide open in a high-performance Razor. Chase adventure on a legendary sportsman. Or get more done with a hard-working Ranger. Enjoy savings up to $3,500 during the Polaris factory authorized clearance. Hi, my name is Spencer Cox. I'm the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Utah, and I'm the new spokesperson for Ride On. Ride On is a unique partnership between all the land managing agencies in the state of Utah to maintain trails, to advocate safety, to advocate wise stewardship amongst all of us who use these trails. And I'm doing it because trails matter to me. This is important for my children. I want them to be safe and I want them to be stewards of the trail. If you would like more information, go to ohv.utah.gov. For as long as I can remember, this is what we do. Rising early to take on the desert. Every weekend, every month, every year, we ride Can-Am. She usually sits out a bike trip, but for some quirky reason, she decided to come along this time. It must have been that perfect fall weather. When we first started up the canyon, Ida spent time looking at the rugged peaks. Then, as we started through the curves, the rhythm of the bike was like the two of us doing the samba. When we got to the summit and looked at the world below us, she let out a little gasp and whispered, beautiful. Then she gave me that look, that one that reminds you how close we really are. This was turning into that trip of a lifetime. A horse may chomp at the bit, but a dog certainly barks his way onto the trail. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are up here just outside of Park City in Pioa, and we are dog sledding. This is absolutely just a whole lot of fun. Hey, how did you come up with the name? Luna Lobos came from my wife. She kind of, When I was a kid, I used to sneak out of the house and run under a full moon. And so we came there, Luna Lobos. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. So Luna Lobos, has this spread that we learned about in the last segment. We're gonna now find out about what it is to cross that 55 acres when we're behind a dog. So let's get going. All right, all right guys. All right. We enjoy the outdoors and uh, my kids really enjoy the snow and we wanted to get them exposed to skiing and also they love animals so we thought it would be nice to come out and spend the afternoon doing some dog sledding. It's remarkably similar to what I thought it was going to be except it was really much more personal with the dogs which I really enjoyed because my kids had a chance to pet them and play with them so I think it's just a much more hands-on tangible experience kind of you don't have the machines it's just you and the dogs and you're really connected to the snow and beautiful scenery and not a lot of interruptions. So this is Umber. So as he came with the name Umber, but we call him Umberto for short. And he's actually one of the best sled dogs we have in our kennel. He's training to be a lead dog, which takes a few years of awesome, great training, consistent training. And you want to know something crazy about him? Is that he's 100% blind. That's what I thought. He can't see a thing yet. Ever seen snow before this trip? Yes. Yes. All right, I got some training to do right now. It's time for Along the Way. We've worked a long time to release these sheep, and we're just excited to let them go on the Mineral Mountain. We've been in 
Nevada catching a desert bighorn sheep from a healthy herd near Fallon, Nevada. One by one, 51 Nevada sheep are tangled in nets fired from the helicopter, hogtied, blindfolded, and airmailed to a staging area. The sheep are given a once-over by a veterinarian, blood is taken, antibiotics are given. The sheep are then carried to horse trailers for the long drive to southern Utah. The Nevada herd is reaching the maximum number its range can handle. The mountain west of Beaver, Utah has no sheep, but with steep granite cliffs and spires, adequate feed and water, it's a perfect place to start a new herd. Bighorns have thrived throughout Utah for centuries and were very important to ancient Utahns. Overhunting and conflicts with domestic sheep reduce their numbers. The State Division of Wildlife has been importing bighorns for some 40 years. The first to arrive were the ancestors of these sheep in Zion National Park. Today, more than a thousand desert bighorns have been released in southern Utah. This has been a great partnership over the last few years working with the Wild Sheep Foundation, Sportsmen for Fish and Wildlife, the BLM, and all of our involved parties to um, make it possible that we can release bighorn sheep on the Mineral Mountain. Restein at your leisure along the way in southern Utah. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the Ute Reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. We go on vacation, I never ask, are we there yet? Because my daddy makes sure each stop we make is at Eagle's Landing. They have such cool things for kids, like a petting zoo. They have the cleanest bathrooms on earth. And daddy doesn't freak out pulling up to the pumps, because they're really big and he says it's the best gas in the world. And you can get your tire fixed, like we had to. Oh, and their food is so yummy. Eagle's Landing is so much fun, I don't care if we ever get there. Hi, I'm Nolan Stedman. And I'm Bruce Stedman. We have been selling motorcycles like this since 1960. Motorcycle has been part of our family forever. We love riding and enjoying the outdoors, everything that Utah has to offer. Riding motorcycles, snowmobiles, ATVs, and now side-by-sides. That's what we do, it's who we are. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. We've been proudly serving Utah's families for over 50 years. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out there, but remember, it's only 30 back. Welcome back to At Your Leisure with Luna Lobos dog sledding in Pioa, Utah, which is just kind of over the hill from Deer Valley and Park City. Now, Fernando, I've got to ask you a question about uh, this sled. It looks like a Navy trainer. It looks like something you'd have in driver's ed. There are two stations on it. What is this thing? So this is what we call a tandem toboggan sled. And what it's uh, used for is for giving our guests a feel of what it's like to be on a dog sled and driving a dog sled. But if I'm training a long distance racing team and I have about 16 dogs strong with me, I usually bring someone in back for braking power because these guys will 
pulls or anything. Uh, well, so is that a chance to train them too? I noticed they both have brakes on them. They do, and that's exactly why we have them. Yeah, so two mushers can use brakes. All right, so if you're training the dogs, and it's time to train me. Can I get a lesson? Definitely. All right, we're going to take off and find out a little bit about what I should know about mushing. Okay, Chad, so most uh, important rule to dog sledding. Once you're on the sled, you never let go, so you hang on tight. Good job, guys, there we go! Woohoo! I'm in training! <laughs> Good job, there it is, very good. You jump back on the sled. Now this portion of the trail slants to the left. So let's shift our body weight to the right a little bit. Okay. And most importantly, we want to always cheer on the dogs. Good job guys, there we go. Woohoo! You guys are doing so good, there we go. There it is, good job. I'm getting the hang of it. Right now, let's find out about our weekly contest winner. This week's contest winner is license plate number VO14CG and was spotted on our adventure last week out of White Pockets. Congratulations, it looks like you're the lucky winner of the incredibly powerful Safari LT portable battery charger from Lion Energy. Next time you're out on the trail, you're gonna love this. Visit lionenergy.com. Don't forget to call us on Monday at 801-947-8888 to claim your prize. And remember, if you've got a limited edition Eagle Landing sticker, there's an extra 100 bucks of gas and gift for you. Okay, let's look at our calendar of events. First up, January 11th at the Strawberry Marina is the free ice fishing event open to the public. This is a great place to socialize and meet new friends and avoid going out on the ice alone. Then, happening January 11th is the Winter Festival at Wasatch Mountain State Park. Lots of outdoor fun things to do. And finally, don't forget about the Winter 4x4 Jamboree happening January 16th through the 18th down at Sand Hollow State Park in Hurricane, Utah. Come get out of the snow and join us on the trail. Next week, we're headed back to the mountains for some more snowy adventures. Kevin and Gina head back up to Brian Head Resort to get their family to check out their winter festivities. Then, we're getting out of the cold and heading down south to where the red rocks and sand meet a beautiful warm blue lake at Sand Hollow. And finally, we're headed out to the Golden Spike National Historical Park for their Winter Steam Festival. You'll want to check this out. Looks like next week's show is going to be a great show as always. Hey, I got a little advice for you. If it's yellow, don't eat it. Okay, because I noticed you were chewing on snow a little earlier. Yes, yes. Just remember, there is adventure around every bend, dog sledding or otherwise. You just got to get out there, get off the couch, and create your own adventure at your leisure. So what do you say, guys? You want to run again? Hey, you in the back, the noisy one. What do you have to say? <laughs> okay, we'll go.